We're back at the bench again today and I wanna to show you this TBD 500 amp Bluetooth smart shunt. Anyone that's got a big battery system like I'm working on, you're gonna want something like this because this allows you to, from your phone, whether it's iOS or Android or your tablet, you download the app, you, you do a couple settings in there and it's gonna show you your state of charge, your voltage, your current, everything that you wanna know about your battery. And this is like a direct knockoff of the Victron shunt, but this is about half the price. I think I paid uh, like 70 bucks on this on Amazon. I'll leave an affiliate link in the description. So let's take a look at this, this time on Ham Radio Tube. So here's a better look at the shunt. It's just a big solid hunk of metal here. You can see 500 amps, all the, all the metal uh, resistors, I suppose those would be. Big, nice, lugs here for attaching some thick wire to with washers and a lock washer on there. Then you've got a couple places to plug in the wires that it comes with. And uh, again, it has Bluetooth. The manual makes no mention whatsoever of what this UART connection is for. So I have no clue what uh, to do with that, but that is what it is. As far as wires, you're gonna get two pairs of these with a, a ring and a little ferrule on there and they are a fuse. This is just basically what's gonna connect the positive terminal of your battery to this to power this. Uh, it comes with two of them. They give you two because you can wire it in a couple different configurations. We're only gonna use one of these red wires for this video, but if you have, if you're doing like 24 or 48 volt, you can monitor your battery pack with both of the red wires. And then it also comes with this black wire, that this one with the ring terminal on, this is actually a temperature sensor that's gonna plug into there so you know the temperature of your battery lug. So that's pretty nice. So let's show you how to wire this up and uh, put this through the test and I'll show you the app and all it does. So the first thing we wanna do is connect this right side to the battery negative. And it says on the top here, two battery minus and two system minus. So this just goes on the negative wire. So I'll go ahead and connect the negative wire here. Then for our positive side, and I have this on a, a fuse and, and there's a switch, it's switched off right now. So I'm gonna take the nut, put the lock washer on there, the other washer, and then I'm gonna put the ring terminal for the red wire that comes with the shunt. And I'm also gonna take this black ring terminal that is our temperature sensor, and then the battery positive cable. Go ahead and Screw that all in together. All right. Then I can take these two black wires and I'm gonna insert them into one of the V Battery Plus and the AUX uh, little inserts here. All right. And then we can take the red wire and plug that into the other V Battery Plus. And then I'm gonna take the other side of this that is to the system minus. So this is to your load. And I'll go ahead and connect this wire here. And this will work. I'm gonna use an inverter for this, but if you're just hooking up a 12 volt system, you can just connect whatever load you want to your 12 volt system and you're good to go. So now everything's connected. Let's take a look on the app and I'll show you around how to make all your settings for your battery, and then I'll show you some load and charge tests and all that kind of stuff. So the first thing you wanna do is connect this to your Bluetooth. So go into settings, find the TBD smart shunt, there you can see it on mine. Not connected yet, but sync it up with Bluetooth. Then you can download the TBD smart shunt app on the Android Play or the, or the iOS uh, Apple Play Store. Open that up and it's gonna search for the nearby devices. So I've named mine K at MRD. I'll show you how to do that in a second. And I'm just gonna tap on it. It might want you to make, a, make an account. I didn't make an account. Uh, I'm not into all that stuff. And here you can see, this is what the screen looks like when you're on it. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, and in the instructions on uh, the very last page, if you're using lithium batteries, you kinda of wanna heed some of that advice. So just by clicking on the gear at the top right corner, uh, the very top is device name. There's where you can name it, whatever you want. Under battery settings, that's where we wanna go. And this is what you're gonna need to configure depending on what kind of battery you're using. So for example, in this test, I'm using a 100 amp hour battery. So under capacity, put in whatever capacity your battery is. 
Lithium iron phosphate, once it's charged, it's gonna kinda of settle down to about 13.2 to 13.4 volts. I just set mine to 13.4, so you wanna do that. Uh, some of these, I honestly have no idea what they're for, uh, but one of the things, a couple of things the, the uh, instructions mention, set the Pukert exponent at 1.05, so make sure that's at 1.05. Set the charge efficiency at 99%. And uh, it also says set the discharge floor. For lithium batteries, you can set it to 10 to 20%. With my lithium iron phosphate battery, I get all 100 amp hours out of this. So I just set mine to uh, zero, this discharge floor, because I get all of it. So basically, if you set this to 10, that's gonna mean that you're gonna get basically 90% of the power. If you set it to 20, that means it's gonna show you 80% of the power when it's, when it's going from full to zero. So it would say it's empty at 80 amp hours if you set it to 20%. So I just set mine for zero because I get the full capacity. That's pretty much all you need to do. Now, you wanna make sure you charge your battery fully before you start using this app and where it says battery starts synchronized uh, that's how it's gonna synchronize that it knows it's a full battery. So when you charge it up, connect the app, and then where it says synchronize there under synchronize state of charge to 100%, just hit that synchronize button, and I'll do that, and you can confirm that, and now it knows that it's 100%. This also has some alarm functions you can set, like low state of charge alarm, low voltage, high voltage alarm. I'm not really sure how to use these, honestly, because it has set value and clear value. The manual gives no instructions on these whatsoever. Um, so I just set the clear value for 10 volts. It won't let you set the set value higher than the clear value or even at the same thing. So I don't know. And high voltage alarm, I'm not really gonna worry about because I have things that are just gonna not charge it higher than what they're for. So, and then low temperature alarm, high temperature alarm, uh, those kinds of things if you're into that. If you're in a cold area, you might not wanna charge it below freezing, that kind of thing. So you can adjust all those settings under others. Here's where you're gonna set under the aux input. Here's where you're gonna turn on that temperature sensor because by default, it's on starter battery. So if we change that to temperature, there you can see we can change it from Celsius to Fahrenheit and then your temperature coefficient, I'm just gonna leave that alone. So now we have our temperature sensor turned on. You can put a pin code on it if you want. Uh, I just leave that alone. And back to the main screen. So here we have, right now my voltage is at 13.65. We're not drawing any current. Uh, we haven't consumed any amp hours. Uh, once we start uh, drawing current from this, this time remaining is gonna basically calculate, okay, we're using X amount of amp hours, or X amount of amps rather, and per the settings that we've just entered in, it's gonna say, okay, we have this much time remaining with this current draw, so you know you have X amount of hours left out of the battery unless you have solar or something hooked up to it. So it's really nice. And when you start charging it, it's gonna back down those. So say we consume 10 amp hours, if we put a solar charger up to it or something, and it's charging more than the load, it's gonna start subtracting those back to zero. So pretty cool. So let's turn on a load, and we'll show you this thing in action. So go ahead and turn the system on now. And by the way, this thing draws almost no current. So you don't need to worry about this being plugged into your system long term, draining your batteries. I mean, it's nothing. So now we have the system turned on. We can go ahead, I'll turn on my inverter. This inverter draws about a half an amp. So here we can see under current, we're pulling about a half an amp, power 6.2 watts and we've got 59, 46 days, so the time remaining is calculating, and that'll do its thing once we get a load on it. So I'm, I've got my uh, soldering iron plugged in, so we'll go ahead and turn this on, let that start heating up, and we can see now we're using uh, about 10 amps. As this ramps up, soldering iron might not be the best thing for this test, but we can see stuff is happening. Now under the consumed amp hours, it's starting to count up what we're using. We can go for a day <laughs> with this thing on with this 100 amp hour battery. We can see the voltage is starting to go down there because we have a load on it now. So that's pretty awesome. Now I turned off the soldering iron. I plugged in a lamp that has five LED lights on it. You can see we're pulling 5.9 amps. The soldering iron was switching on and off, so I wanted to give a little bit more consistent readout on here. But with this lamp on, 
You can see where you can go for a day and eight hours or so, seven hours as that calculates. Pulling 5.8 amps. And let's hook this up to my meter here and see what this says. This says about six amps. So pretty darn accurate. So now you can see we've pulled 0.14 amp hours out of this and we can go for 20 hours. So pretty sweet. And as we start using the battery, this where it says 100% on top there, that'll start going down. Uh, and I'll, let's put a higher load on here and I'll show you what, this, uh, what that looks like. Now we've got a heat gun on here. You can see the voltage is going down. Now we're at 99% power using 67 amps. We can still go for three hours maybe with this. This is on the low setting, 800 watts. We've consumed 80 amps. Let's kick this up to high power. If we go to the input tab, we can see the temperature. That's the temperature at the terminals right there. That's, that's a good thing to have there. So we're 80 degrees there. Make sure you're not overheating. You don't want to start a fire or anything. I wish that was on this main screen, but not a big deal to just hit that uh, input tab there. So pulling amps like crazy, no problem. This is just freaking cool. So some other cool things about this shunt working with the app, you can take a look at the bottom where it says graphs and history. You can check out a graph and see like what's happening with the battery over time. It graphs all that out. You can change your settings here, current, voltage, power, all that stuff. You can go to history and you can see like deepest charge, last discharge, all that kind of stuff, all kinds of information, everything you'd want to know about your battery. It's pretty sweet. Now, one thing to note, when you close the app and everything, it's gonna save all the data, even if it's not monitoring. So if I had a load on this, opened up the app later, it's, it's still gonna accumulate for everything. But once you disconnect this from power, you're gonna lose all your memory. So uh, in, in cases like mine, where I use this more for portable applications and I will be disconnecting it and connecting it repeatedly, I won't be able to track all that long-term history. But if you have this in an RV or like a home backup solar system, it's not gonna be an issue for you. So now I've hooked up a 20 amp charger and I wanna show you what happens. We're gonna watch this consumed amp hours and I'll show you what it does uh, when charging. And just like that, you can see we've got 19 and a half amps coming in and the consumed amp hours is going down. So it's always gonna tell us if we've got solar hooked up specifically is what I would use this for. We know I've got a 100 amp hour battery. I've only used two amps, even if I had a load on this with solar going in, it's gonna monitor what's going in and what's going out. And once this gets charged back up, it's gonna be back to zero. So that is, uh, this is, this is awesome. I'm really happy with this. 70 bucks versus I think 150 for the Victron shunt. The app is similar. Uh, I've used the Victron shunt. I mean, it's, <laughs> this is like a spitting image of it. So uh, I am really, really happy with this. I've been using it for a couple weeks now, playing around with it. So just wanted to show it to you guys. And uh, that's about all I got. I'll leave a affiliate link in the description if you wanna pick one of these up. And until next time, thanks for watching Ham Radio Tube. We'll see ya, 73.